welcome to another episode of Dr. Me First. It's me, your colleague in medicine and coach in life, Dr. Freaking Aaron Wiseman. And I am just super pumped to be back on air. We took a break over the summer. Kayla, my wonderful podcast editor, had baby 4.0. That's right, 4.0. She's beating me. <laughs> She's going to have to keep beating me at this point. But I'm glad to be back and recording. Over the summer break, I had some phenomenal guests, and so I'm so glad to be releasing them. This one especially with Dr. Susie Sharp. If you have not been following Dr. Sharp, you need to be. Her paintings are absolutely phenomenal. We'll put her Instagram link in the show notes because you need to go and look at what this internal medicine doc has used to put on the canvas to help her deal with burnout. So I'm going to share our conversation that we had over the summer with you today. But before we do, I'm so excited to tell you about our sponsor this week. You know why I'm so excited? Because it's me. (laughs) It's not just some company. It's actually me. Physician Coaching Alliance. The Physician Coaching Alliance is made of healthcare coaches who really believe that healthcare can be changed through the process of coaching. We believe that we are better together and gone are the days of competition. We are all about community. Physician Coaching Alliance is for anyone who is coaching curious, who wants to become a coach, who is looking for a coach, or wants to institute coaching into their hospital group or organization. So head over to physiciancoachingalliance.com. You'll see all the 60 plus coaches that are there and yours truly, HBIC, head badass in charge there. We really want to encourage you that if you're interested in possibly getting into coaching, you need to come check out our Coaching 101 course that starts next week. So get signed up so you can get all the information about it and so that we can send you the replays. So if you're working while we're giving the webinar you can always watch it on the replay. So go check out physiciancoachingalliance.com. Welcome to the podcast, my friend and fellow physician, Dr. Susie Sharp. It's so great to have you here with me today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, tell the people out in podcasting world a little bit about yourself and the magic you put out into the world. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm an internist in Springfield, Missouri. Um, I grew up in Korea and uh, got medical degree and residency from Yale. Um, And I've been in practice for about 20 some years. And I also do art. I love it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Your word that you're bringing to the podcast is passion. And I love it so much. And we're so we're going to jump into it. So tell me a little bit, how did you get started in your art? We were talking about this before the recording, but I want the people to hear your wonderful answer. So I grew up in Seoul, Korea, uh, wanting to become an artist when I grew up. And then when I was 16, my parents suddenly decided to immigrate to the United States. So we landed in New York and uh, I didn't speak any English and started in the middle of high school. And we experienced a lot of teasing, a lot of bullying, I cried in school all the time. And I quickly realized that if I went into art, I might become a starving artist in the street. And I needed to find a more secure career for myself just to be able to support myself. And uh, I happened to be a super student. And so I thought perhaps I could become a physician, but it felt like an impossible dream. Uh, I couldn't even tell my own parents because it just uh, felt so far-fetched because no one in my family did anything like that. Um, I didn't have any support. Um, but to make a long story short, I, uh, I did pre-med, studied chemistry solely because it required the least amount of English. And I went through pre-med and medical school having to record all the lectures because I couldn't take notes and having to work multiple jobs because my parents couldn't support me at all. So, you know, I had to pay for my own education and all that. Um, eventually, uh, I finished my residency and uh, start practicing medicine. And then at some point, I realized I really needed to go back and do art as well. And fortunately, you know, medicine, which in my case was plan B, uh, worked out well. I loved being a physician, um, but 
I felt like that wasn't that alone wasn't enough for me. So I started doing art on the side while raising kids and keeping busy medical practice, which wasn't easy. And so past 10 years, I've been very successful as an artist. And now I'm showing internationally with the show coming up in Paris, uh, Brussels, Luxembourg, in addition to New York and Miami all this year. Um, so it's been, uh, it's been quite a journey and I love doing both medicine and art. I, I wouldn't be able to do just medicine because I would have burned out. And I, I did burn out and I quit medicine at one point, but by doing more on art and I just found a good combination where um, I'm just fulfilling my left side brain and right side of brain. And so it's, it's, I, I find a personally good, happy combination at this point. Yeah, it's it is so much about really finding that balance because you know as we were talking about before we hopped on the recording like medicine training practicing it crushes all other creative outlets if you don't purposely make space for it. That's so true. That is so true. You know, I lost three uh partners in my group uh, to burnout. And they are all female physicians, and I think that burnout among female physicians is much more prevalent for many reasons. And they were great doctors; uh, patients love them. And but it's such a loss to the society and to our patients uh, to lose physicians like that. Um, so I feel pretty <laughs> strongly about helping other physicians to uh, to find their own path and. Uh, you know, well taken care of. And like your word, like to to rediscover your passion because it's under there. Just like, you know, saying people ask you, you know, like, when did you start art? Art has always been a part of your story, probably even as a small child. And I can remember being in my backyard in the middle of cornfields, like delivering these amazing speeches to whatever birds would listen to me. And little did I know that that would help uncover my passion for podcasting. Yes. And so I think it is really like retapping into that passion, but also giving ourselves the permission to say, this is worthy and this is valid and this can take up time out of my schedule and there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, unless you're just actively carving out that time, it could get crowded out. You know, uh, I felt like for a long time, you know, my patients own, you know, own me and my kids own me and I had no time, but we got to carve out some time for ourselves, you know, and I found that that physicians are very talented in a lot of things, a lot of areas. And, but, you know, practicing medicine, going through a training, it kind of suck it all out of you. And we have need to kind of go back and rediscover some of things you know, that's part of us. Exactly. Talk to me first. That's what it's all about here. Well, I found you initially on Instagram and I remember the painting for which I came across. Uh, even though I live in landlocked Indiana, water calls to me. I it, it calls to me and your paintings illustrate the movement and the flow and the beauty and the light reflection, reflection off of water so greatly. And that was the reason I sent you a a DM because I just looked at it and I was like, that is what I feel when I'm at the ocean or at the lake or at the river. And so talk a little bit about like, that just didn't just happen. Like the the, the artist that you are today, she just didn't pick up a, a paintbrush when her kids were in elementary school and you were practicing and then boom, you, you like had it. So talk about those like first initial paintings and like the getting started again. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I started taking some courses in community college at, okay, uh, at night. And then I started doing some workshops, uh, which could be like half day or three days, whatever. And just little by little, I started doing that. And then I joined art groups. Uh, and I couldn't make it to half the meetings because they would be during the daytime. But at least, you know, there's a community out there. And I started doing joint uh, group shows with them. And so I might have like a one painting in the show, but then, you know, I started painting more. And at some point I got invited to do solo shows where, you know, I might have 15 to 30 pieces of all my art. Um, so 
that's how I got started uh, while practicing medicine, which is not easy. And uh, those times, most of my paintings were done past midnight to about, you know, midnight to about five in the morning. And then you get catch up on a few hours of sleep and then going to work. <laughs> but um, just, I, I was just kind of persistent, uh, you know, and uh, at some point I decided this is going to be my dual career. So side by side with medicine and art, it wasn't just going to be a hobby. And um, and I, I now I sell and ship paintings coast to coast and internationally, and uh, and I think a lot of people find my art they call it healing, um, inspirational, and so on. Because you know, as physicians, we see so much human suffering. You know, we see addiction, we see death and dying, chronic pain. You know, profound depression. I mean, we we treat chronic physical conditions and emotional conditions. And, and I feel like I like to show the world a beautiful, brighter side of life because it's there, but you have to seek, seek for it because if you just turn on the news, so if you just listen to just typical stories, most of them is negative and sad and upsetting and, you know, depressing. And so my job, my mission as an artist is actively seek out things that are beautiful, happy, um, positive. And so my colors are bright. My message is, uh, is uh, to, to seek out the positive side, although you know we are in the midst of a lot of darkness, sad stories. But if we're not seeking out, you know, we could we could easily feel pretty sad and frustrated and you know depressed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I love how you phrase it as dual careers, because being a burnout and transition coach, so many people come to me looking for their way out. And I have to kind of help them pump the brakes on that because a lot of times the way out is through and through that process of journeying and, and figuring out who am I and what do I really want, then we realize that Maybe a little bit of medicine. I always call it a doctor-shaped hole in my heart. I got a little like VSD down there that I need to like, you know, plug up every so often. It, it's just those small incremental changes. Talk to us a little bit because I know, I know there's probably someone sitting out there and they're like, you know, I like to do name whatever creative outlet they have, but I'll never get to the le level that Susie's at. Like I'll never be showing paintings in New York or shipping shipping paintings to Australia, what advice would you have for that, that colleague who's sitting out there thinking that? I think uh, doing anything creative is therapeutic at any level, you know, whether it's just for yourself or your friends. I think in the creative process, whether it's music or whether it's writing, okay, or even, uh, you know, writing a children's story or writing poetry or, or just Anything, I think it's it's therapeutic. Uh, I think it's therapeutic for the person doing it, and I think it could also be a great gift uh, to others. Uh, and I think it's very meaningful. Um, so it doesn't have to be anything grand, but I I find that a lot of visions have it. It's just the, it it's just that creativity has been crushed uh, by well all the things that we uh, they have to deal with. You know, um, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, because it, it can be extremely demoralizing if we aren't filling our own cup, if we aren't finding those things that bring us joy and satisfaction. And to be honest, like, it's not our job's purpose to bring all that. You know, that's part of the exploration of life and, and also for advocating for ourselves to say, like, no, actually, mm -hmm. I don't want that. Instead, I, I want to try something else. Talk a little bit more as far as, because I know when I was in the middle of my burnout, there was a lot of numbness. There was a lot of emotionalist, no emotions. But when there was emotions, they were big and <laughs> explosive. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, and that's one reason why I do, I, I do love your paintings because the colors, like the intric intricacies of the colors, like. You know, you look at the big view of your picture, but then when you 
zoom in a lot of times on your pictures, you see these microscopic small mm-hmm. flicks of color that mm-hmm. really intrigue. Could you tell that I have kind of been stalking your website, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> I really have been. I love, and you post amazing things on Instagram. So you guys need to follow her. I'll put her Instagram handle in the, in the show notes, but talk to me about how art helped you heal that colorless part of burnout in your story. Um, I think, you know, the ocean lovers series, I started last year uh, and I started really for me initially because I love ocean. I, I usually take at least, you know, a couple of trips abroad uh, and some within the country. And, and I always see the ocean. I love the ocean. But, you know, last year we were all locked down and couldn't go anywhere. I was uh, feeling really sad. And in the midst of it, I decided, well, let me try something that's in that theme. Okay. And then I realized it was, it received such a positive review. There are a lot of people who are long, longing to get away, both physically and just emotionally. Uh, and uh, from that support, I started painting more in that theme. And then it just became like my most popular series. <laughs> and uh, so it's been very therapeutic and it's been very therapeutic for a lot of people. In fact, I think of a one. Uh, I I think about multiple people who are facing some seriously serious life crisis and they got my painting and they uh, felt like it was giving them something bright, happy, something hopeful. And I receive a lot of uh, reviews like a lot, a lot of uh, responses like that from all kinds of people. Um, So art has helped me to reach a lot of, a lot of people actually coast mm-hmm. to coast outside the country as well. So the latest thing that came out is that uh, someone in, in Bangladesh, semi art um, and uh, she uh, has a fabric company. She, she, she's a CEO of fabric company and decided to put one of my ocean theme paintings on, on fabric. And so she bought the painting and, and, and translated to the two fabrics. So it just came out actually just this week. And uh, so she's going to be making beautiful, luxurious dresses from that. And I kind of posted that story on a few Facebook groups. And I think within two days that I got like 5,000 likes <laughs> and, uh, and hundreds of hundreds of comments. And so, um, uh, you know, I think that story is resonating with a lot of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you have some upcoming in-person shows because, you know, yeah. the world is opening up. Talk a little bit about those. Where are your paintings going to be? Where can people maybe go see them in person? Okay. So my next show is in New York. It's in Hamptons, New York. Uh, it's an international show. So there will be galleries coming from, you know, many different countries, uh, usually Several thousands people attend. Uh, it's from August 12th through 15th. Um, and official name is Market Art and Design. And um, and so anybody could come. Anybody who were in the area could come. My next big show in the United States is in Miami in December. That's uh, with Art Basel and the first week of December. So that's a huge event. Uh, in between, uh, you know, in, I've got three shows in Europe, um, starting with the Paris in September. So, yeah. And then, you know, my on, uh, my uh, website, you know, I'm constantly updating. And so, yeah. Yeah. And that's SusieSharp.net. We'll put that in the show notes, too. I mean, Miami in December doesn't sound very bad. I'll be perfectly <laughs> honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, should be should be a lot of fun. <laughs> well, Dr. Susie Sharp, you inspire me. Your paintings inspire me. Like I mentioned before, I will own one eventually. And I just thank you so much for putting your art out into the world and for coming to talk to us today. It always feels so much more real when I sit down with a colleague who's doing amazing things and be like, huh, if she can do it, so can I. Yes, yes, anybody can. Yes. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, not feeling stuck, I think is important. There's always outlet. And 
you don't have to do full-time medicine. You could do, you could combine it with various things and that might be a way to stay in medicine. The, a lot of physicians feel like, well, this is all I could do, but that's really not true. If you got through medical training, that means you, you got a lot of other talents. Hell yes, absolutely. I truly believe that people, we have more than we think we know. And, and to get into that binary thinking of either I'm a good physician because I work full time or I'm a terrible person because I don't want to do this. There is so much gray in the middle that we must embrace, you know, and luckily organizations, practices, offices are coming around to the notion that you can be a good doctor no matter how much you work or how little you work or how you show up looking at work. It's fine. You just have to be there. You yourself have to be well and balanced and then you can take care of so many more people because a happy doctor is a productive doctor. Yes, yes. Happy doctor is a productive doctor and also good for patient care and good for society because I think about three female docs that we lost um, and they were great doctors, but, it, it, you know, those are the days when really there were much fewer options uh, to work part-time and so on. Right now, you know, there, there are a lot of role models of physicians combining with other things. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I think it is we're better. Although there's more demand on us. <laughs> there's an awful lot of demand on us for medicine. Yeah. So it is. It's it's truly what you're exhibiting, which is, you know, finding that balance. And only you can determine it. Hey. Are you tired of going at it alone? Well, friend, you don't have to anymore. Come sit with me. I want you to know that it's okay if you need to take a break. It's okay if you need to talk about some real crappy things. It's okay. You're not the first to feel like this, and you don't have to stick it out and be miserable. There is a way out, and there is a whole movement of fierce females in your corner. If you want to come sit with me and be in my community, you will not see me in Facebook groups. I freaking hate Facebook with a deep and fiery passion. <laughs> but what you can do is come over to Aaron Wiseman's Badass Collective on Slack. Because guess what? Once a badass, always a badass. And this isn't anything that's paid. It's not anything that I'm like throwing huge promos at you. It is simply a community where I am trying to get people together in the same space so that we can have these kind of conversations safely and in a protected manner that you feel so loved on. It's the whole purpose. So click in the show notes, get over to the Slack group. We do have some community rules. But, you know, that's just how it goes. But I would love to see you in there. I am in there almost every single day having real conversations, posting crazy pictures of my kids and gifts, all that good stuff. And I want you in there, too. So come on over. Come sit with me. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much, Dr. Susie Sharp, for coming and talking to me. Also, I got a promo, Physician Coaching Alliance. If you are coaching curious and interested into getting into coaching, but want the real story with the no BS version, come over to physiciancoachingalliance.com and get registered for our week of Coaching 101 webinars, everything that you're going to need to know about how to get started coaching, why you should be a coach, how to do it without breaking the bank and what community can mean for you. So again, head over to physiciancoachingalliance.com. There you go. You know, one of the things that sticks with me from talking with Dr. Sharp really is her word, passion, and the passion that she was able to rekindle in medicine. Because let me tell you, I've been there. I've been there where I've totally regretted that I've held the white coat and put on the stethoscope that I had the big ass diploma on the wall. And I think it's so important to realize that that doesn't mean that you're a failure or that something has gone wrong. It's just a point to sit and look at and say, is this really my passion? Is this really important to me? 
And if I continue it, how can I do it in a way that rekindles my heart, my soul, my passion? And I'm so excited to have an example who said, yeah, you can be both. You can be an artist and you can be doctor. You can be a podcaster and you can be a doctor. You can be a makeup artist and a physician. You can do whatever your heart desires and sings out into the world and partner that with medicine. A sustainable career is absolutely possible for you. And I'm so excited to continue to showcase physicians who have said no to the traditional path and made their own damn way. So thank you, Dr. Susie Sharp. And I want to encourage all of you out there listening to remember your life, your calling, your pulse matters. <laughs>